Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter four talking about the defect management and continuing into the next segment that is 4.2, the defect lifecycle and the software development lifecycle. As a part of this particular tutorial, we'll be actually exploring that how exactly defect lifecycle can be associated and aligned with the software development lifecycle, which is critical and very important, and uh, how these activities can actually be monitored in terms of tracking a particular defect and required any kind of assistance in order to get them resolved. And uh, these defects can actually give you a lot of information, so tracking them would be really important for any test manager and setting up a layout like the options to track the features or the fields to be captured when tracking a particular defect or logging a particular defect creates a very important impact on the overall thing. Now here, the very first section today, we are talking about that what exactly can happen with the defect. That means when you talk about identifying a defect, which is one of the major objective of testing that it is all about finding defects, but when exactly can you find a defect? Is there a timeline? Is there a specific time point or timestamp that this is the particular phase where you generally find a particular defect, not before that or something? Now that's where we are trying to explore here in this particular segment that what exactly can happen within the software testing life cycle with the defect life cycle and the overall development life cycle. So as explained in the foundation level syllabus already, we have learned about a lot that what exactly a defect is, what is the defect tracking life cycle, which consists of different phases, like initially it will be new, then comes to open, then assigned, rejected, fixed, resolved, then you retest it and if in case it does meet the expectations, that's it, it is done and closed. But if in case uh, it does not fulfill the expectations of retesting, that means the defect is not yet closed, then it reopens. So that's the cycle, of course, the defect follows throughout the journey when the moment it is found till it is closed. But here, now of course, uh, we also covered about the defect details in the foundation level syllabus and we introduced that when a person makes a mistake during the creation of a work product, what exactly a defect is introduced. Now this work product can be requirement specification, a user story, a technical document, a test case, a program core, or any other sort of work product which can be produced during the software development lifecycle. Now, as we understand this, we are good to relate that static testing is something which can help you to identify defects much earlier in the life cycle. It's not that you should always wait for dynamic testing to happen in order to resolve or find defects. Now, static testing can very well help you to find and identify defects much earlier in the life cycle. Now, defects may be introduced at any point. And that's not just limited to the work products which we were just talking about, that it can be only about requirement, it can be only about defects uh, of code, or it can be uh, kind of, you know, architecture. So it can be anywhere, you know, your defect can be identified, or sorry, defect can be introduced uh, in the software development lifecycle and in any software related work product as well. That means there is no such specific work item type that you can say uh, generally requirements will have a lot of defects and architecture will not have. Anyone can go wrong and we have to admit that humans are error prone and we can go wrong at any particular point of time and requires that how exactly you can plan for it. Okay, so the reason we are talking that a defect can be introduced anywhere is from the point of preparing ourselves to identify them as early as possible in the life cycle. <clears throat> Therefore, each phase of the software development lifecycle should include activities to detect and remove potential defects. That means it's just not limited to dynamic testing, which you conduct after getting the code. You can even test the static documentations by conducting reviews. Now, the earlier each defect is detected and removed, the lower the overall cost of quality for the system will be. Cost of quality for a given level of defect is minimized when each defect is removed in the same phase in which it was introduced. Now, of course, we always strive to achieve this success rate that we try to identify a defect as early as possible. If in case you do remember from your foundation learning, we said that the cost of fixing a defect increases when it is found later compared to earlier. The moment you find it earlier in the life cycle, it is cheaper because it requires less rework and you can resolve it quicker. But when you find it later during the software development life cycle, it is expensive to fix. The reason is, of course, a lot of rework needs to be done. Now, furthermore, static testing finds defects directly rather than finding failures. 
and thus the cost of removing the defect is lower because debugging activities are not required to isolate the defect. Now also to add something more here that what exactly we can call certain terms here to determine that if you have found or you were able to find a defect right in the same phase where it was introduced. Okay, so that basically stands for something like uh, that defect was introduced in requirement phase and uh, you found it in the requirement itself by conducting this requirement review and we call it as phase containment. Phase containment is a terminology used when a defect is identified in the same phase where it was introduced. So assume that a defect was introduced in the requirement gathering phase and you conducted a review in the requirement phase itself and you identified that defect. Similarly, if a defect was introduced during coding and you conducted a code review and you found the defect then and there itself. See, we always thrive, we always thrive to achieve as much as phase containment possible. Phase containment just means that you could locate the defect, identify the defect in the same phase where it was introduced. Whereas the other term for the same thing is called as phase escape. Phase escape means that a defect was identified other than the phase where it was introduced. For example, a requirement was in, a defect was introduced during requirement phase, but we identified during dynamic testing or we identified during code testing. So that's called as phase escape. So these are the two standard terminologies which are being used to determine whether you had a, uh, when you identify a defect, whether it was a phase containment or it was a phase escape. Furthermore, static testing finds defects directly rather than finding failures. And during dynamic testing, activities such as unit testing, integration testing and system testing, the presence of defect is revealed when it causes a failure. So that was a dynamic approach, of course, from the foundation. Again, you know that the difference between static and dynamic is static, you do not execute the application. And in dynamic, you execute the application, you interact with the product, and then you realize what kind of failures are happening. And here, here failure does not really mean that you got the root cause, right? You've just got a scenario to share with the developer that what exactly went wrong. And you are not even sure that whether it is because of what you are seeing on the screen or it is because of something else. So you have to spend a lot of time getting into the root cause and then resolve the issue. So that's where we say that detecting uh, the presence of a defect is revealed when it causes a failure, which results in a discrepancy between the actual result and the expected result of a test. In some cases, a false negative result occurs when the tester does not observe the anomaly. Now here the false negative is a term which basically says that when you do a typographical error in mentioning the expected and actual result. Assume that if you talk about uh, the expected result was error 404 or say 401. Okay, so that was your expected result. But when you executed, you got 401. That as an error message. But while typing the actual result, you did it as 104. So 104 is different than actual expected. So you marked it as failed but it was actually a typographical error. And such things are called as false negative. That means whatever we observed false results were actually negative. But sometime when we do the other way around, that means actual result was different, but we did a typographical error to make it as correct. We call it as false positive. For example, the error message was supposed to be 201. Actually, you got 201, but by writing the expected result, you mentioned it as 102 and marked your result as fail. Now that's called as false positive because it was a error in the typographical manner. Okay, so that's where a lot of things need to be observed by the test manager and we'll be doing a deeper dive into that into our upcoming tutorials. So stay tuned for that. Right now we're just closing off with a basic introduction to this section. Of course, it has got a lot of other informations to talk about. So just wait for upcoming tutorials there. So the next tutorial, you will explore more about this section in a deeper dive about different states of a defect and how you can categorize them properly in different categories. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to assist you and answer your questions well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.